big results today from Pfizer. Politico reported that late last night, Pfizer executives met with White House officials to go over the bivalent booster as 50% Wuhan, 50% BA.4.5 with the White House officials. This morning, they released a press release by Pfizer that has some data in it. First of all, we got to point out right off the bat, meeting with White House officials is not the normal way in which pharmaceutical companies disclose these results. Typically, they put out a press release for SEC reasons. They also talk to the FDA. They may publish a peer review paper. They don't directly go to the White House. That is a shattering of important norms that the White House is directly puppeting these bivalent booster decisions. We don't want them to. You do not want political leaders playing doctor. You want FDA impartial civil servants making these calls. Unfortunately, the two best ones resigned, Marion Gruber and Phil Krauss, under pressure from this White House. Let's talk about what these results show. The top line result, the big thing people are talking about, it's this quote from the press release. Bivalent boosters elicited approximately fourfold higher neutralizing antibodies against Omicron BA.4.5 sublineages compared to the original COVID-19 vaccine in individuals older than 55. They're doing a very simple comparison. They got a lot of people from 18 all the way up, and they compare them in two different groups, two different cohorts, people who got a fourth booster dose of the original Wuhan strain and people who got the bivalent booster. And they all have an increase in antibodies. I mean, every time you boost somebody with this vaccine, you get an increase in antibodies. But the real question is how much more BA4 or 5 antibodies do you get from the bivalent booster than you do the original Wuhan? We've had a couple of preprints that suggest there's no increase in BA4 or 5 antibodies. If that's true, that's quite damning. This says there's a fourfold increase in people over the age of 55. But what about 18 to 55? They don't mention that in the press release. Where's that bit of information? Raman Farzani Far speculates that it might be negative. I'll put that tweet up on the screen. How is this being covered in the media? I want to read you a quote from Stat because this blew me away. This is an actual quote from the media coverage of this. A fourfold higher titer, that would be good, said Kramer, who has done some paid consulting work for Pfizer. Fourfold is usually the magical cutoff for a lot of us when we look at neutralization. Fourfold seems to mean something, end quote. The part of that quote that really gets me is the who has done some paid consulting for Pfizer. What kind of news organization can't find one expert under the sun on one of the most important issues in public health who is not actually taking Pfizer cash in their pocket? We've got Borla quotes in the press release. We've got quotes from another guy, Kramer, who's getting paid by Pfizer for consulting. Can we get some impartial experts here? Can we actually get somebody who, you know, has some impartiality not taking Pfizer money. Okay, what are my thoughts here? One, antibodies are not destiny. If you give somebody a vaccine and there's an increase in antibodies, that's, you know, maybe encouraging. If it's fourfold, it's actually quite modest. It's maybe encouraging if it goes up. If it doesn't go up at all, it's really sort of pessimistic, but it's not destiny. There may be some relationships between the initial antibody response in vaccines and the ability of those vaccines to protect, protect against symptomatic disease in the initial period of time in early 2021. But those relationships do not translate. They do not hold equally for somebody who's already gotten three doses and is now facing the question of whether or not to get additional doses like the fourth bivalent dose, dose or somebody who's gotten four doses facing the question of whether or not to get the fifth dose of bivalent booster. It doesn't apply. There is no surrogate validation for people who've gotten four or five or three doses of the original Wuhan strain, whether or not an increase in antibody titer is gonna provide them a further reduction in severe disease and hospitalization. I'm also gonna show on the screen the Moderna Pfizer comparison from the VA. It is abundantly clear that Moderna, the, the vaccine, always generated higher antibody titers than Pfizer vaccine. But practically, that didn't affect policy one bit. We treated both of them as equivalent protection for severe disease and hospitalization. We didn't stop the Pfizer campaign and switch over to Moderna on the basis of that difference in antibody titers. Antibody titers are not destiny. That's why in situations we haven't validated a surrogate, we do randomized control trials that measure the clinical endpoint. The White House didn't want to do that. They wanted to roll this vaccine out on the basis of eight and 10 mice. Now they're playing games. One study shows increase in BA4 or 5 antibodies. One study doesn't show it. We don't really even know the truth. If there is an increase in 55, it's fourfold. What about 18 to 54? We don't know that. They're playing games with these titers. We still don't have real world evidence. What percent of people who are getting boosted or not boosted or having breakthrough infections? That's going to be fraught with some confounding. But there's an easy solution. Make the company 
that's making tens of billions of dollars do the right study before they get to the market, which is a randomized trial measuring clinical outcomes that people care about. That's the solution. They didn't do that. They've lowered the regulatory bar so Pfizer can trip over it into billions and billions of dollars. And now we're quibbling about antibody titers, which it's very hard to know what it means. And I disagree with this person who's taking Pfizer cash, that it is a magical cutoff for a lot of us. If you weren't taking Pfizer cash and you were thinking clearly, it wouldn't be a magical cutoff because there's no credible data for someone who's had three or four Wuhan doses, what an increase in BA4 or 5 antibodies is going to mean for severe disease, hospitalization, etc. This White House, they're out of their mind. Not only did they have a booster campaign, they got to go after five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, 20-year-olds. It's mandated at Yale University. Other nations that are leaping, at least are leaping in 65 and above or 50 and above, they're leaping for the whole population, indifferent to the potential risks or downsides of a perpetual booster campaign that lacks evidence. I've never seen anything like it. These decisions are not being made within the FDA. They're being made by the White House, as evident by the Politico article saying they're having meetings with the White House. That's not how medicine works. That's not how drug regulation works. This is all the shattering of norms. I'll say it again. If Donald Trump did one-tenth of this, it would be front-page news in the New York Times over and over, Donald Trump shattering norms, op-ed after op-ed of how could he do it. But because of this administration, they get a pass. They don't get a pass from me because I am a believer in evidence-based medicine. That means before you go to a 20-year-old and you make them take the fourth shot within two years, you'd want to have some evidence that they're better off as a result or other people are better off. We know that other people won't be better off because this vaccine can't halt transmission. We know that because one piece of evidence is a lot of people who've gotten it have already had, already had breakthrough, like Rochelle Walensky. And another piece of evidence is that none of these vaccines have ever halted transmission. Dampening transmission is a meaningless endpoint because if you dampen it just a little bit, that might work if you just had a single encounter. But if you have to have encounter after encounter after encounter for the rest of your life, it's all going to get washed away. So that's not going to matter at all you're going to get breakthrough eventually. So my overall thoughts of this Pfizer press release was it's unprecedented. They spoke to the White House. The quote is ridiculous. Find someone who's not taking Pfizer cash next time you want to have a good quote in your little article. And we don't know what these antibody titers mean. We need randomized controlled trials measuring clinical endpoints. FDA didn't make them do it. FDA, fail. Keep failing, FDA. You just keep failing. You're tweeting a lot of rhetoric, promoting this product. What you're doing is you're failing at your job to hold a regulatory standard that experts like myself and others would agree with. So until next time.